The Galaxy Z Fold 3 was undoubtedly the best foldable phone of 2021. There's no two ways about it. But how well has this guy held up a year later and with the Fold 4 just around the corner, should you buy a foldable anytime soon? Well, to give you an idea, one of our team members has been using the Fold 3 for a year now. In fact, the Fold 3 has circled through multiple pockets in our office throughout this period. And in this long-term review, I will try my best to summarize our year-long experience with this phone and try to discuss about its practicality, everything new that it brings to the smartphone experience, and where Samsung could improve with its upcoming successor, the Fold 4. Okay, first things first, if you want to live the foldable life, you will have to get used to its thick and heavy form factor. It's essentially a phone and a tablet molded into one body after all. Lucky for us, we got used to its heft right away. This thing is still a lot heavier than a typical smartphone, but after a few weeks or so, you won't even notice it. That learning curve might differ among people, but you get the idea. Besides the phone being able to transform into a mini tablet just like that, I guess the next best thing about the Fold 3 is its compact form factor. No, seriously, it's such a lost luxury that I can't recall the last phone where I could wrap my hand around like this. The side-mounted fingerprint reader is perfectly placed for a quick unlock and Samsung's candy bar or gold bar design, whatever you like to call it, is as practical as it is bold. Almost. Although uh, handling this phone with one hand is uh, quite comfortable when folded, that tall 25 is to 9 aspect ratio of the cover display is sadly a hard pill to swallow. Whether you're typing up a message, attending a video call, or uh, simply watching a video, this narrow form factor makes things just a little bit complicated. Swipe typing is fine, but um, as soon as you go about actually typing each key, there's a mistype almost 30 to 40% of the time. So much so that the backspace key has become my most used key. At the other end of the spectrum, something like scrolling through your Instagram or Facebook feed feels fantastic on the screen. Or attending regular phone calls, uh, browsing the web and stuff like that. Still in all, such tall and narrow design is something that I'd like to see Samsung work on its successor. And if rumors are to be believed, the Fold 4 is indeed going to be a little shorter and wider compared to the Fold 3, thus making way for a better outer display. Now, before talking about the core quality of these two displays, I'd like to first go over its hinge. Like its past two generations, Samsung claims that this guy can withstand 200,000 folds as well. While I am nowhere near reaching that milestone anytime soon, I am glad to report to you that my Fold 3's hinge is as solid as it was a year ago. It can still stand on its own at whatever angle you'd like, which means you can enjoy features like flex mode. But um, I'll be honest, this feature is only really useful in a handful of apps, even though you can force enable it on all of them. Likewise, Samsung is more proud in terms of the hinge's durability this time. With the new armored aluminum material, the hinge has survived a couple of times when the phone accidentally bumped against a concrete wall. You can clearly see the aftermath of the accident next to the side frames with their visible discoloration, but there is not a dent on the hinge itself, which is awesome. The Fold 3 also boasts IPX8 water resistance. Considering all the moving parts, I think this one is one hell of an achievement. And all this sounds even more extraordinary when you realize that no other foldable phone out there except for Samsung's own Galaxy Z Flip 3 has an official IP certification. Now, if you're familiar with IP codes, then you know that the X in IPX8 here suggests that the Fold 3 is not dust resistant. So that would be another thing I would love to see on the Fold 4. But more importantly, I hope Samsung will use a zero gap hinge like most of the competition have on its upcoming foldable because the hinge mechanism on the Fold 3 has started to show its age in multiple ways. Firstly, because this thing leaves a gap when folded, the main display collects dust, especially lint, a little too easily than you'd like. And secondly, this crease. It exists and it's gotten much deeper after all this time. Since I don't use the stylus that often, this has not bothered me a lot, but someone who does will certainly not feel the same way. 
but for normal usage because the crease sort of disappears so you should be fine with it okay so while that gapless hinge is by design my fold 3 does not unfold flat anymore as you can see it's not smooth 180 degrees when unfolded now but more like 170 175 degrees instead i don't know exactly when this happened but we first recall noticing it about two to three months back Although I can't say that this has affected the integrity of the phone in any way, but still that's something you should know about. Back to the displays, um, here from colors, contrast, brightness, Asia certifications to the smooth 120Hz refresh rate, it still holds up against the flagship phones of 2022. The one thing about this display that still impresses me to this day, apart from the folding unfolding marvel, is how it feels to touch. I clearly remember that the inner display on 2020 Z Fold 2 had this soft, almost plasticky feel to it. Compared to that, the Fold 3 feels much, much better, which is mostly thanks to the new PET screen protector. Of course, this is no match against the Victus strapped cover display, but it has survived an entire year without suffering any major scratch or anything. As expected, this display does not disappoint in terms of the visual quality either. But like how you got to deal with the black bars or crops when streaming something on the cover display, that whole experience continues on this side too. Unless when exclusively binging old-timey cartoons and anime or Zack Snyder's Justice League that fit like a glove on the Galaxy Z Fold 3. So in the middle of filming this review, the screen protector on the main display started peeling off on my unit down the middle and after talking to Samsung officials, they said that it was okay to take it off entirely. The display feels quite nice now to be honest but I'm pretty sure I will use a screen protector eventually. The company does not provide such services is here in Nepal but Samsung does replace your screen protector in other regions. Oh and before I forget, its stereo speakers are undoubtedly among the best I've ever come across on a smartphone. The full body sound filled with plenty of details and complemented by a loud sound profile is just Moving on, uh, part of the reason why I love this main display so much is also because Samsung decided to go with an under display camera here. This is the company's first ever attempt at hiding a camera underneath a display and I know it's nowhere near a polished product but I can totally live with it. Cause just like the crease, this camera cutout is barely noticeable when I'd be going about my day. It's certainly visible when pixel peeping and stuff but I was never really worried about it. The actual camera quality, however, is pretty meh. The images turn out quite hazy, they look overprocessed, and there's little detail to talk about here. But that has not been a problem since the Fold 3 lets me take significantly better selfies from the rear cameras or the one on the cover display. And um, about the main cameras, they take pretty decent images too, from the ultra wide, wide to 2x telephoto lens. Even though it does not compare against the S22 Ultras or the iPhone 13 Pro Maxes of the world, I never felt totally disappointed by its results. With that out of the way, it's time to get into the performance side of things. Granted that the Snapdragon 888 powering this guy is a generation old, it still holds perfectly fine even to this day. Multitasking is no big deal for this beast and the overall fluidity has only gotten better over time with all the updates to Samsung's One UI. Usually what I've seen with the foldables from other brands is that the extent of multitasking on those devices is mostly restricted to the split screen for launching two apps at once and a floating window. But Samsung's software expertise goes above and beyond to make sure that you can make the most out of the Fold 3's large display. There's the flex mode I talked about earlier, there's easy window switching, app continuity, pinning apps to the taskbar and so much more here. You're obviously not going to make use of them all the time but uh, there was this one time when I had to send my laptop for servicing and I was able to finish most of my work from this phone itself, even without text. But one thing I like to see one UI improve upon is the ability to extend an app from the cover display to the main display. It works uh, fine in like 95% of the apps, but a few of them that open in landscape orientation by default, mostly games, require a restart whenever switching to the main display. 
Aside from performance itself, its large display is also an absolute godsend as far as gaming is concerned. Modern titles like PUBG Mobile, Genshin Impact, Asphalt 9 and the likes run without a hiccup and you know what, I don't think I need to go through how the Snapdragon 888 handles all these games again. We've already had a whole year of 888-powered smartphones to discuss. Instead, the Fold 3's form factor has rekindled my love for retro arcade games. I don't mean to say that regular slab smartphones can't handle emulators or anything, but this bigger screen makes all the difference. And just take a look at this. I can even turn my Fold 3 into a Nintendo DS. How cool is that? I never owned a Nintendo DS myself, but I can spend all day searching for shiny Pokemons or Pokemon black and white on this thing. The only problem is that the Fold 3's battery could not get me through a busy day on most occasions. Only when limiting most of my um, usage to the covered display could I squeeze around 5-6 to six hours of screen on time here. And charging it up is not an inspiring journey either, at least not by 2022 standards. So that was all for my long-term one-year review of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. And if there's one key takeaway I can drive from all this is that foldable phones are absolutely ready for the mainstream market, with the Z Fold 3 setting the perfect example for that. It just works as well as you'd expect from any smartphone. Some features are better than the others, but I don't think there are any particularly deal-breaking flaws here, even though Samsung does have a bunch of things to work on for its successor. First and foremost, uh, Samsung has to match the competition in terms of minimizing the crease. And an S Pen slot inside the phone itself would be a sweet, sweet deal too. And I think an uh, improved under-display selfie camera and newer image sensors with better computational photography might just be what the company needs to stand out next time. But above all, the ultra-premium price tag still remains one of the major barriers why most users have not been able to join the foldable revolution. The Fold 3 was cheaper than the Fold 2 and that's fantastic, but I desperately hope Samsung can find a way to make the Fold 4 even cheaper despite everything new that it brings to the table. And we already know how just sharply Samsung foldables depreciate over time and no one wants to see their expensive phones lose so much of its value in such a short time. So better and cheaper foldables is the only way for Samsung to remain the dominant name in the space in the long run. And it looks like the company is well aware of this as the upcoming Fold 4 will reportedly have a 128GB base variant instead of 256GB, which shaves off the starting price by a significant amount. That won't make it dirt cheap or anything, but it's still something.